In this example, we're going to solve this trigonometric equation, the sine of x minus 1 equals the cosine of x. And we're going to be finding these values of x in the interval 0 to 2 pi, so that means we will need our answers in radians. So if you'd like to try this on your own, go ahead and pause the video and do so, and then come on back and we'll work it together. Okay, so looking specifically at this equation, it looks like we have both sine and cosine, but neither one of them are squared right now. So in order to change it so we're only in sine or cosine, it seems like the best bet here would be to square both sides to ensure that then we can use a Pythagorean identity and get everything into terms of either one of them, sine or cosine. So when we do that, this left side becomes sine squared x minus 2 sine x plus 1, and the right side becomes cosine squared x. Okay, well, we know the Pythagorean identity here, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So we can use this to go ahead and solve for cosine squared and do a little substitution here so we can write it in terms of sine. So cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. So let's go ahead and make that substitution. So we're going to have the sine squared x minus 2 sine x plus 1 equals 1 minus, well, sine squared x. Okay, well, it looks like these 1s will cancel. That's nice. And then when we add sine squared x to both sides, it looks like we're going to have 2 sine squared x minus 2 sine x equals 0. Okay, not bad at all. So only two terms here. Let's go ahead and factor this using the greatest common factor. So it looks like both terms have a 2 and a sine x. So we'll go ahead and factor those out. And what's left appears to be a sine x minus 1. Okay, so I have multiplication here with this factor and this factor, and I get 0. So the 0 property for multiplication tells us that, you know, at least one of these has to be 0. So let's account for both of those, and we'll say 2 sine x equals 0, and sine x minus 1 equals 0. So solving these equations, so over here we'll divide by 2, and we'll see that sine of x equals 0, and over here we'll add 1 to both sides, so we have sine of x equals positive 1. Well, where does the sine of x equal 0? Well, that occurs at 0 degrees and 180 degrees, okay? How about where does sine of x equal positive 1? Well, that occurs at 90 degrees. We need our answers to be in radians, though, instead of degrees. So let's go ahead and put these in order. We'll say x equals 0, pi over 2, and pi. But because we squared both sides, we need to be really careful here because I could have an extraneous solution in here. So we need to go back and look at the original equation, which was the sine of x minus 1 equals the cosine of x. And we just need to try all three of these values and make sure that they work. Okay, so let's try the first one, x equals 0. So the sine of 0 is 0, 0 minus 1, okay? And the cosine of 0 is positive 1. So negative 1 equals positive 1. Well, that's not true. So this 0 will not work. Okay, how about x equals pi over 2? The sine of pi over 2, well, that's 90 degrees, so 1. So 1 minus 1 equals. And the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. 0 equals 0. Yeah, so that one's good to go. And finally, let's try uh, x equals pi. So the sine of pi is going to be 0 minus 1, and the cosine of pi is negative 1. So negative 1 equals negative 1. That works as well. So it's a good thing we plugged them back in because we saw that actually this x equals 0, despite getting it as one of our possible solutions, it uh, actually was not a solution. So we have now for our final solutions x equals pi over 2, and pi. And again, when you square both sides, it opens up the possibility for extraneous solutions to come into play. Because of course, if we had squared both sides here, 1 equals 1 would have been true. But that wasn't the original equation. So here we have our original equation, 
sine of x minus 1 equals cosine of x in our interval 0 to 2 pi. And here are our two solutions in radians, x equals pi over 2 and pi.